On behalf of Tuck um, and Tuck's family and Betty, who could not be here today, I want to thank you all for coming together to help us remember Tuck. So, grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather today in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to give thanks to God for the life of Tommy Tucker Gates, to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit, to proclaim the good news of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Out of Tuck's long-standing commitment, along with the tradition and commitment of his family to medical science and toward helping others, he made a gift of his body to University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. So we gather here today to commend his spirit to Almighty God, the one who formed and shaped us, giving us the gift of life, and to offer our thanks for his soul. Let us pray. <coughs> Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave, you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. I will 
find other seas. Thanks be to God. Friends, hear these words as they come to us from Scripture from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 12. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. We've come here today to give our thanks to God for the life of Tuck Gates, and following my remarks, I will invite family members and others to share some remembrances of Tuck and their reflections on his life. Tuck was a smart guy. He was outgoing and made friends easily. His commitment to family and friends was focused deeply on his children and grandchildren. He was generous of spirit, with a smile, with encouragement, and was always looking on the sunny side of things. Some of his closest friendships were those he kept from the time he was a kid. Tuck had a deep capacity for love, especially when it came to his son Trey and his daughter Liz, and his two grandchildren Knox and Zane, like many folks, he seemed to really come into his own when he became granddad. He rarely missed a Saturday of coming by the house with donuts and chocolate milk or pigs in a blanket. He loved being papa to them and probably shined more in that role than in any other. Liz said when, he, when she was a kid that her mom was often working a night shift and so her dad had to get her up and get her ready for school every morning. He had to get her dressed and get breakfast for her. And the tough time came when he would try to put her hair into a ponytail. He would brush it and pull it so tight that she said she probably looked like somebody who just had a facelift. He was very smart and witty and always wanted to make good choices. He was caring and loving and made sure we cared for Grandma, the most important thing. He never missed a birthday party for grandkids or kids and always had a handwritten card for birthdays and Christmas. Liz said he was always there to listen to me, no matter what it was. He knew how to get through difficult times and always encouraged me. He might tell you the same story over and over, but he was so good at telling those stories that it was worth listening again. He helped me get through the loss of my first husband, she said. He listened to me and he helped me figure things out. He was helpful in reminding me how important it was to move forward, that it was okay to have feelings for someone new, that it was okay to keep living. It was a big influence in all of that. To have someone who was on your side no matter what was so important. I really did know he was behind me all the way with his advice and with his wisdom. I knew that he also had my boys, his grandkids, in mind. He had a wicked sense of humor, which would come out at some of the darkest times. Even when his health was failing and the situation wouldn't be very funny, he would say something that would have the nurses and everyone else in the room laughing. He kept a smile on his face to the very end. Trey said he had a kindness about him. He never met a stranger. He loved telling jokes and making people laugh. He was a hard worker, even on his days off. All around, he was great father. He was there when he could be and made sure we knew it. When he was healthy, he loved being outdoors, fishing, camping, or working outside. He was always trying to find things to work on. 
He was a free-living spirit, he said. He was always patient with us, understanding, willing to offer us his wisdom. I'll miss his kindness. He never had anything bad to say about anyone. He was not judgmental. He was my best hype man because he would always hype me up, he said. He was always making sure we were taking care of other people in our family, especially our grandmother. He checked in on her regularly, calling every day, going by to see her, checking to see if she needed anything. He was selfless in that way. He could also be very charming and apparently was something of a ladies' man. But he was also tough. Something would happen to him and he would have an accident and he just seemed to be indestructible. He would always pull through. That's also probably what upset him toward the end when, he, when we would have to see him laid up in bed without being able to take care of himself. He wanted to be strong for all the rest of us. He passed along life lessons about respecting people. He taught us to say, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, and yes ma'am. And he wanted his grandkids to know those lessons too. He reinforced his understanding of not judging other people. If he saw a homeless person, he would say it's important to help them. It was all a part of living out the golden rule. In everything, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Liz said even after he was divorced, he wanted his kids to know they were to love their family and to respect their mom. He and my mom, Edie, stayed in touch and continued to be friendly for our sake. Even though they seemed to be better apart from each other than they were when they were together, they still cared for one another. I think that may have come from his deep sense of the importance of respect for others. Tuck lived a good life. He lived every moment to its fullest, and we are thankful to God for him. I'd like to invite others to come and to share your remembrances. Well, I try to hold it together, but thank you so much, Lander. That was absolutely perfect. That is who he was. I thought it was so, so good. Thank you so much. I had written a few notes here, but uh, Lander really, I mean, he, he was so eloquent about it. He said it perfectly. I just have a couple of things I wanted to add to that. I mean, first of all, he was a son, a brother, a dad, a papa, an uncle, a friend to many. He was, he was such a kind-hearted person. And uh, something that happened this morning, I hadn't even... This wasn't part of my notes, but it was something that happened this morning. I get up early in the morning, I have my coffee, and I walked outside, and the sun had actually risen, but what the remnants that were left was this beautiful, big, puffy, pink, golden, glowing clouds. It was magnificent. And I stood there a minute, and you know, it happens so quickly, it moves away, just like when the sun sets, it's, it's a moment. And I was just thinking how that's kind of like life. You can say the sun rises, the sun sets in our life. But really, that when the sun rose, it moved so quickly. And it was like, in the big picture, our life is just but a moment. But it's so beautiful. And I just, when I saw that, I just, I don't know, it was kind of like a gift to me this morning. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. The other thing I wanted to say is, I don't think I ever had a conversation that tucked in, in that conversation by saying, I love you, Sarah, and he called me by name. It wasn't like it's just, I love you. It was, I love you, Sarah, and I can hear that voice even now. <clears throat> anyway, um, I, I guess that's something, and I think about Trey a lot because he's kind of our teddy bear. 
you are always so open with telling us how you feel, giving us those big hugs. I love you for that. Um, I know all of us are really grateful for the gentle love he showed our mother, um, taking her McDonald's coffee and the big pancake breakfast and checking her mail and going to the grocery store and doctor's appointments and things, everyday little things that he was there for. And uh, I'm just really so thankful for that. My mother loves him so much and, you know, she's really missed him this last year because he was really sick. But anyway, he's in a better place now and no pain, peaceful. Lizzie and Trey, he loved you guys so much and was so proud of you. And y'all both know how education was really important to him. So he would be so happy to see y'all continue to get your education. He'd be so proud of you guys. And his beautiful grandsons, his heart was overflowing with love for them. And um, I'm just so happy as a parent and grandparent myself, I'm so happy that he has had that experience of knowing that kind of joy, because it is real pure joy. He was so happy to know that Trey and Lizzie have really good people in their lives. Matt, or are you Matt, over here? Matt and Carter, y'all are our family. And he was so, so proud of you guys and happy for Liz and Trey. And I do have to say, he loved his sisters a lot. <laughs> you could have just asked him and he'd have told you. <laughs> but he loved his nieces and nephews. He was proud of all of us. He was really proud of his family. And I guess today I'd kind of like to uh, remember his kind smile. As you said, his charisma, his quick w wit, his charm with the ladies, and his gifts of making, his gift of making friends every place he went, always. I'm certain He's in heaven. He was welcomed with open arms, and he's having a wonderful time. And, um, you know, I'll miss him. I saw him a lot. A lot? <laughs> anyway, that's all. And I thank everybody for being here. And thank you again, Linda. That was really great. Thank you. I wrote, I just have a little poem that um, just really spoke to me. Like Lander said, and like Aunt Sarah said, Dad was a really great grandpa. He, you know, even maybe better than Dad, he loved being a grandpa and he loved Knox and Zane so much. And so when I came across this little poem, it just felt right. So I'm going to read it. You want to try not to cry. Um, so I'm, it says grandfather, but I'm going to replace it with pawpaw. A pawpaw is a special gift received from God above. He starts out with patience, then adds an abundance of love. He enjoys telling you stories about how he grew up. He'll share his sandwich with you and let you drink out of his cup. He lets you get away with stuff that mom and dad won't do. He'll teach you how to do things, even share a secret or two. He is always willing to listen to what you have to say. He knows how to make you smile and will never stand in your way. He has tremendous faith in you. He has... He just has that special touch. It's no wonder then, Papa, why you are loved so much. Thank you all for coming. Um, if anyone else would like to come up and say something, you're more than welcome to. Um, but thank you all for being here. And you all mentioned he kind of had a, a way with the ladies. And he had a way of kind of flirting without getting himself in trouble. And I well, guess that's was, good. <laughs> that's a good thing. That's yeah, a good thing. Yeah. But he, he was being attended by, I think, a slightly overweight nurse who leaned over his body and he says careful now you got that sexy little belly rubbing on my arm <laughs> that was a little tough yes. <laughs> are there other things that you would like to share can anyone talk that <laughs> well, maybe trey can <laughs> well I'll, I'll tell this story for trey okay a tuck was working at tanglewood and I think he was walking down the hallway with Trey, where the pool is, and you can look down at the pool. And Tug goes, 
And I don't know the exact words, Trey. You can help me out, Teddy Bear. He said, Tuck said, wow. You know, the girls were down there with their bikinis on and everything. He goes, that's the best part about this job. Yeah, he said, it's the best part about this job. And Trey goes, Dad, that's Lizzie. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he went. Oh. <laughs> and then I think he got on to me saying I'm not allowed to wear a bikini. <laughs> oh, yes. Like a dad would do. Like yes. Would do. Right. And I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your child, Tommy Tucker Gates, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave him that kindled in him the love of your dear name, enabled him to care for others faithfully. We give thanks to you for his kindness and generous spirit, for the care he gave his family, especially as he grew in his understanding of responsibility and support. We give thanks for the blessings of his children, Trey and Elizabeth, and of grandsons, Knox and Zane, and for the ways that he became the best papa they could ever have. We give you thanks for his devotion to his mother, Betty, for the good ways he kept in touch with her and taught the rest of his family the importance of caring for others. We offer our appreciation for his sense of hard work and for the ways he passed along those values to his children and for his humor, the easy way he could get others to laugh and see the brighter side of things, even in some of the darkest times. We thank you that for him death is past, and pain ended, and that he's now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sparrow. 
and I know he watches, and I know he watches, and I know he watches. Friends, let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may God's people say, Amen. Thank you so much. That really was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So glad you were here with us, Lydia. And I know Mom. Yeah, yeah. I would like everybody to t uh, consider taking a memory stone before you leave today. One of those words, Mom, let me know for you. <laughs>